where we'd love to help improve your home and improve your life. I'm Cindy Dole. I'm Eric Stromer, and we are actually having the best time hearing about this amazing place called the Pasadena Showcase House, where some of the world's, I think, top designers are showing up and creating such, such unique spaces. Every year, this, this is a tradition. It's been going on for decades, and it's been a tradition for Home Wizards, too, because we love to uh, learn from this experience, to celebrate the, the good cause that's tied to the Showcase House, and it's all about raising money to, to bring... Uh, just the joy of music to kids who couldn't afford musical instruments. Yeah, what couldn't be better? And uh, it's just a great, it's a great trip. You know, you you go to this house. In fact, my husband and I, we go several times. Even though you and I will do it on a work thing, uh, we'll go with friends. And it's just a a nice leisure day. Well, Bill always tries to crawl into the beds and (laughs) take little naps, which is frowned upon, by the way. A lot of times we'll (laughs) hang out by the media room because they always have spectacular TVs there, too. But seriously, in the back they have restaurants and you can shop. And it's a fun day. It's a fun day. So make sure that you do go see it. You go to PasadenaShowcase.org for how to get tickets and so forth. But we're also giving away tickets on the show today. But let's get to one of the other major spaces every year. You want to know what's the kitchen like? What's the kitchen like? And just having done our own kitchen, um, I I am really impressed with this new kitchen and feel like we are very close. It's not quite this guy's kitchen. Because no, he has, can, a, he has a La Cornu stove. Yeah, I, see, this, I, I think this that my is kitchen the is, covet of my existence. But I think, that my, I think that my GE appliances rock. I'm loving my GE Cafe line. But let's find out uh, what Gregory Parker was up to, because he always does amazing things, and he's with us right now. So, Gregory, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. <laughs> All right, so paint a picture for us. When you first got to the Showcase House, this 1920s home, uh, earlier in the year when it needed this redo, right? What did the kitchen look like before? Well, I think the kitchen had been redone in the 70s, so it had it had oh, kind no. of a 70s vibe to it. So wait, 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 wait. So you walked in and you probably went, "Oh, come on!" <laughs> like that in your head, didn't you? Well, you know, <laughs> it it takes when when people do something like that, uh, it it takes a while to sort of kind of get to that point where and you, you have want to pick do it your again. words <laughs> and, you, and you have to say interesting yes, and different well, <laughs> and words like that right <laughs> the, the, the thing that that kitchen did have for it was that the layout was was pretty good functionally it had a it had a good layout so I didn't have to do any big changes that way but so about the appliances did you redo all the appliances we we brought in all new appliances thermidor uh, primarily um, a wonderful Gaginoff coffee station, and then the what what I, I would call the crown jewel of the kitchen, which would be the La Cornu. Yeah, and for people who haven't seen the La Cornu, it's like a cobalt blue. It's cobalt blue. It's it's got just it's such a beautiful thing. I I, I call it the supreme cooking machine because I mean it, it functions at a very high level. If if you're uh, if you love to cook, um, it it you have a, a tremendous amount of control. Um, on this, but it's just fun to just sit there with a glass of wine or a cup of coffee and just look at it. Cause See, I'd be afraid to cook on it. <laughs> well, I would just put frozen pizzas in it uh, and watch. It it really it it works extremely well. Um, but um, always in design, you're always trying to find a way to combine function and beauty. And this this um, appliance really really accomplishes that. So here you had this 1970s kitchen, right? And how much space? did you have to work with in the kitchen? Well, between the kitchen breakfast room, butler's pantry, and there's a nice walk-in pantry, we had about 650 square feet. And uh, it was kind of interesting. I think at some point um, down the line, the, what is now our breakfast room uh, was an outdoor patio. They, they uh, enclosed that to create this, this breakfast room and then uh, the the butler's pantry, which I think was a traditional part of the house, uh, remained. And so now you have a very nice open space. Uh, what we wanted to do was uh, the 
entrance between the kitchen and the, the breakfast room was, I felt, a little bit confining. So what we did is we widened it three feet. We raised it up a foot. So there was a little structural work involved in that. And uh, now there's a very nice uh, open relationship between those two spaces, more, more like how people like to use their kitchens today. So here, talk about the palette, because that's always something that I think overwhelms people in their kitchen. They want to have something that will be eternal. You know, here in our kitchen, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the befores, we had an orange kitchen. We we couldn't afford a kitchen redo. And so for the longest time, for 10 years, our solution was just to paint the cam- the cabinets. And we chose a terracotta orange. And it didn't really go with the rest of the house, but it was fun. Now here in this kitchen, you say the last remodel was in the 70s. What were the colors then? And now you introduce this beautiful cobalt blue stove, but the rest of the kitchen isn't cobalt blue at all. It feels very neutral. Well, the kitchen that we walked into initially had kind of a green cabinet, which I kind of associate with the 70s. Here mm-hmm. again, n- nothing terrible. The The floor was uh, more of a, a kind of a yellow color, and the walls were um, <laughs> more on the yellow side, I would say. Uh, what we do as designers, I feel a little bit like a detective because when I go in, the first thing I want to do is just kind of take a look around inside and outside and just you know, take my clues from things that I like um, that are there. And one of the really great things about this house was this beautiful tile that would seem to be everywhere, um, some inside, but, but a lot of, of on the outside. Uh, you, you talked earlier about the peacocks at the pool and this beautiful Malibu tile. So I thought, well, we want to bring some of those colors inside and make make that kitchen feel like it's connected to those beautiful gardens. So that's so, why so, the blue stove, then. Right. Huh? The, it's the peacock is the stove. Well, you could say that. I uh-huh. I I thought I was really struck by that blue. I I because that's kind of a special thing. I I thought it it needed a special color, and uh, we incorporated. Um, into our palette, those really beautiful, cool colors, as well as as the warm kind of butter color that you see on the walls, and uh, it's it's a nice combination of cool and warm. And that backsplash tile is that that was not existing, correct? You chose that. We did, and you know, initially, what I wanted to do because our countertops are are a little more dramatic. It's it's a, a quartz site called Oasis Green, and it has lots of really really pretty. Um, deep greens and even some chartreuse and a little bit of blue and and some rust and and so uh, the backsplashes are quieter t- um, using uh, what I call uh, it's a rectangular mm-hmm. tile t- um, typical of kitchens in the 20s but we we twisted a little bit by putting the uh, hammered nickel ribbon through that which creates a little bit of interest but I think th- the most fun we had with that backsplash was adding um, a, f- a photograph of the house th- that was transferred onto a marble tile, and we um, put that as our focal point behind the cooktop. Great. It's a great backsplash. It really is, and, and it's superimposed and embedded in the uh, bisque of the tile, and then the glaze goes over that. Is that how it works? I'm not exactly sure. I, I think it's one of those things that, that if they told you, they'd have to kill you. Ah. Sure. <laughs> it's a great service, though. I bet you could, anyone could go and have this done, right? Absolutely. Uh, Adobe Designs in La Cunada is, is the, kind of the spearhead of, of that and uh, it, it, you can pretty much take anything, your, your, your favorite um, animal. Yeah your, or, yeah, your pet, whatever, your family. You, hey, you got to tell me about the kitchen sink, too. It looks like it's pounded metal of some sort. You know, it's got an antiquated feel, but it's new. How, how, what is that? Well, it's, here again, um, that is a hammered nickel sink. What I like about it is it's a couple of different things. It's, uh, it's much more forgiving than, you know, some of the highly polished uh, kinds of uh, sinks, even even just regular stainless steel, but it's it's got a great texture, so it adds that element as well, and 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 a little bit more of that old world kind of feel. All right, well, don't go away, Greg, because we have some more questions for you on this transformation of the kitchen. We have to get to the butler's pantry and how he really did a beautiful job in a, in a small space of storing your food, storing your supplies, and of course, you have to have your wine. 
Refrigerator. Duh. <laughs> it's all coming up. Home Wizards, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dolos. We're taking you on a trip through the Pasadena Showcase House. We're back in a flash on KFWB News Talk 980. Ain't you hear that wind how? So, Eric, when I uh, got my own little personal tour of the Showcase House this earlier this week, and I visited with Greg Parker in his space, he showed me this bottle of wine. It's huge. Yeah, Greg, Greg has, is holding in this photo a very <laughs> how, large bottle. How, how it's a magnum, it, isn't it? It's it's a lot of wine. And I said, no, you didn't you didn't get that full. Oh, yes. So anyway, <laughs> Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, there has to be a wine element of no, Home Wizards gotcha. always, somehow, yeah. right? Uh, as we love to help improve your home and improve your life. And wine may be and part of it. get you a little liquored up occasionally. You, you, you that's right. Anyway, the kitchen, the butler's pantry, uh, the breakfast room, that's all part of uh, Gregory Parker's space with Parker West Interiors. And he's hanging out with us this morning. So thanks, Greg. And tell us about that bottle of wine. Well, <laughs> I, I uh, perform with a group up in Yosemite at the Iwani. Um, in, oh my in gosh! December. So there, there's a, a friend uh, that works with us who is an enologist who works with a winery up in the Napa Valley, and he brought this bottle. And I think um, it's it's the largest wine I've ever seen. It's an I entire think, vineyard, you know. Yeah. It's a- yeah. <laughs> but they, and how, how long did it take you to drink all that, by the way? Not as long as you might think. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually was consumed rather quickly. But uh, I think it's called a Nebuchadnezzar. I, I think uh-huh. that's the uh-huh. largest size. But I, I I had to have it, so I talked him into giving it to me because I thought, I'm, I'm going to do this kitchen. I, I, people need to see this thing. So you have, speaking of wine, a, a, an elegant, wonderful wine refrigerator. Talk about how that wait, works. Wait, wait. Before we do, what, yeah. do, you, how, what do you perform? In? Oh. Are you a singer or a I, musician? I'm, I'm a musician, singer, pianist, and uh, the Bracebridge Christmas Dinners um, is a longstanding tradition at the Iwani Hotel, started by Ansel Adams and a few other people in the late 20s when wow. the hotel opened, and it's it's something that uh, if you haven't had that experience, uh, it's 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 should be on everybody's bucket list. It's a it's a great 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 thing. So to the wine refrigerator, yes. Paint a picture for us. What does it look like? It it's it's how many bottles does it contain, and well, how does it work? It's it's called a wine column. It's made by Thermador. Uh, it's uh, has a glass door. You can um, I think uh, the capacity is around. 150. Jeez. And uh, it's, well... It's basically I, a wall of wine bottles. It is. And and th- I liked, we we tried to find a place where it would make the most sense. And to me, it, why not in a butler's pantry? It's right, right on the other side of the, the formal dining room. And um, we could have put nicer bottles in there. I think there there's quite a little selection of two buck chuck, but... Uh, mm-hmm. But it's uh, definitely uh, for for yeah. a wine connoisseur. Now, in that pantry, because I'm always I love what designers do as a solution for smaller spaces, because the pantry really isn't that big, and uh, you've done a great job of making it feel spacious and organized. And then this narrow kind of a galley is where I guess the butler would would do his thing to get things organized. And you have done a really beautiful job of displaying crystal and sterling silver on these shelves. And it doesn't look clutter, and it's well lit. So describe how you came up with this whole use of the space. It's decorated nicely, but it doesn't feel like it's just a bunch of stuff, you know, all just rammed out there. It feels, you know, elegant and um, and not too overdone. Well, t- here again, it's it's uh, in a traditional home like this from the 20s. They they would have wanted a place for uh, their china and crystal, silver. Uh, what we did is we created uh, a, quite a bit of storage space, but we uh, have glass cabinets that we lit with uh, LED strip lighting, and which is a great way to sort of display items. Uh, and also, you know, you can f- find things easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we put a, tr- a traditional mahogany top in there. And one of my favorite details, if if you go through the house, uh, in the corners of the countertop, we, uh, instead of just a, a straight miter, we put this curved kind of S-curve. And it's, 
I, as a designer, t- these are the kind of things that you get really excited about. And, and I think uh, when you see it, you, it's, it's just a fun thing. And the, the use of the lights, talk about uh, the task lighting that you have in all the, the cabinets and shelf areas and even in the pantry, too. I mean, it's a little, a little detail, but a big difference. Well, in the walk-in pantry, uh, one of the most important things, of course, is to be able to see things. And we've got uh, some cantilevered shelving in there, also in the mahogany. Uh, and we use the LED strip lighting, yeah. and that makes a huge difference. Really? Instead of just having an overhead light, when you when you put that in there, it's it's actually installed behind the the lip of the shelf, mm-hmm. and it just it just transforms that area into uh, just a very easily accessible, um, easy to find uh, food area. Yeah, it's almost like a display case. It's got that artistic jewel box feel almost totally you know what else i love about your your design is you know it, it's it's got such unique and individual and creative things but it feels timeless to me it's not it's not going to go out of style ever it's not so trendy that you know this is gonna, you're going to be sick of it in five minutes it'll be there forever how can we as as homeowners or, or people that are redesigning a space how do you think that way well t- I, I mentioned a little earlier that a, a designer is a little bit like a detective. You you really want to look through the house to find clues that, that are going to make that house feel like it's, or that new part's going to f- be connected to the older part of the house. So those are the things that I looked for. One, one real inspiration was uh, there's a door that goes from the, butler's pantry into the dining room. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned earlier, this is called the Casa de las Puertas, the house of doors. This fantastic door has a scalloped uh, copper edge on it. We use that detail for the hood above the cooktop and also our window treatments. And that's just a fun way to connect to the house in a fresh way, but also something that you're not going to get tired of. Something else that I think is great, I mean, there's several things that, that I love. You, you, you have an island, the, the classic island in the kitchen, but, and you have some stools that are, that are you know, positioned to sit there. But open beyond that, your quote-unquote dining area really isn't formal. It's just this, these two tables that are separate that you could have, you know, if you had a party, you could have people seated at two different tables, or if it's just you and your family, uh, you could have one table. Talk about your thinking on that. It, it isn't your, your formal dining room at all. Well, because they had a formal dining room with the large table, I thought it it would be more interesting for the family to have more intimate and casual dining. So instead of having one chandelier in this rectangular room, we we split it into two chandeliers and then put the two tables underneath. Now, because people use their space in different ways, we actually designed a leaf to go between those two tables so that you can make the room into a large rectangular table. But for most most everyday use, it's nice to have that smaller table and it's just more intimate. Really nice. And the display of plates. You have beautiful, uh, Is it's a Mexican pottery you were saying, a Mexican ceramic? Fifth generation family from Mexico that makes these beautiful ceramic. In blues and yellows and all, beautiful. Yeah. It's, it, it, also, that kind of display, is it's, it just creates kind of a coziness and, and a, a comfort uh, just to have the plates on the wall. And, mm-hmm. and um it's and, they, and they're tied together because they, well, they aren't all exactly the same, but the, yet they, they look like they flow. You know, it isn't like too matchy-matchy, but it isn't like a hodgepodge either. No, it's, it's like somebody took a collection of things that they love. Some of them have little animals on them. They're whimsical, but some really beautiful designs. And, and again, it does add that timeless feel. Very cool. Well, thank you, Gregory Parker. Make sure when you take the tour at the Pasadena Showcase House, just say hi to Greg. You'll be there, right? I will. The time. And you'll, you'll see the You'll kitchen. know me as that big bottle of wine. <laughs> and I, I especially want to check out that Adobe Designs, that photo embedded on the tile backsplash. I mean, think of that, Eric. You could have a picture of anything, anyone, and you can now it becomes art. On it's top. really amazing, yeah. yeah. Great Gregory service. Parker, you did it again. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, as we continue into the next part of Home Wizards, we're going to talk about some ways to boost the value of your home.
Let's do it. Let's do it. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, Home Wizards, call on in for your chance to see the Pasadena Showcase House, 888-539-2980. We're back in a flash.